They told us to give a disclaimer. The views expressed on this podcast are those of the podcasters, any guests, and do not reflect any of the management, owners, sponsorships, or employees of thereof. Pretty much, if you're soft, don't listen to this podcast. Um, one thing I pride myself on is just being the same and, and trying to look out for my folks along the way. Like, even with all these, you know, big things happening, like, you still mad humble and you still, like, you have enough clout now where you could easily be like, I'm not fucking with this. I'm not fucking with that. Oh, yeah, motherfuckers. It's on. Unrestricted podcast listeners, thank you so much for clicking play. Because of you, those numbers are going up, up, and up. Man, YouTube is looking nice. We're on our way to a million views. Looking very nice. And uh, if you're on the audio platform, Apple, uh, Spotify, SoundCloud, make sure you drop a review. Let me know what you like. And if there's stuff that you hate, leave a comment. Tell me how much you hate it as well. Today, I got a very special guest across from me. 34 ranked heavyweight in the U.S. of A. The number one ranked heavyweight in Utah. The former... FFC heavyweight champion of Utah, Kent Mafaleo. Oh man, saying former. We're, we're coming off of a, a tough weekend. Yeah. A tough weekend, man. Um, since I've known you, since we've become friends, this is the first time I've seen you on the opposite end of this fight life. Tell me about how you're feeling right now. You came in here kind of limping, so how, how are you feeling? Uh, physically, I'm a little sore like my legs from the kicks but uh it's more of a mental like i'm just kind of down you know i'm uh i'm happy you know i'm blessed i'm not trying to complain but uh i just didn't perform like i know i can and uh how i feel like my my real fans that that have seen me and followed me and watched me know that i'm better than that and i just had an off night and uh I'm anxious to get back in there, man, and uh, prove to myself that uh, that uh, I'm better than that. You know, it's just a mental. My my mind and my body weren't in in the same rhythm. My wife, my son, we've we've been friend, uh, f- fans of yours since we first seen you fight, and it was the first fight that you had at the Maverick Center, and. Whenever we seen you Before we became friends Whenever we seen you We're like That's the guy Like this guy Is special And we've always felt Something very special About you So Saturday If We feel nervousness Right As fans And as true supporters Of yours How were you feeling Leading up to this fight Uh, The leading up I felt great man My body And uh, the training I was I was doing really well In sparring And just uh, My My gas tank Was at an all time high Man I was feeling like I was firing on all cylinders And then just uh, Man I could Not to make excuses But just the The day of the fight It was a drag I I checked in at Maverick Center at 4 Mm. And you seen there was a long night. Usually mm-hmm. we're done and out of there by nine thirty. Mm-hmm. I don't think I fought till like ten thirty, and uh, just being back there six and a half hours, watching Talon lose, uh, my my boy Tyler Call watching him lose, watching uh, Zeke lose. That normally I don't get to watch all the fights, and I just see the outcome if they come back to the locker room, or win or lose, you know. Yeah. But I'm not really focused and uh, locked in on their fights like I was this time. And I, I absorbed a lot of the energy from that. And it it took a lot of fatigue, mental fatigue. That, uh, I don't know, I just couldn't snap out of it. It seemed to, I was just f- like brain fog kind of, so to speak, you know. Do you, they, I think that manifestation is is, you know, a thing. I didn't feel that from you. When I was watching the fight, one thing that did throw me off, and if you want to see the fight, the full fight, I'm sure it's on uh, the Fierce Fighting Championship website. Uh, go follow uh, them and follow. make sure you follow Kent, man. Like, this dude is a tremendous athlete. He, he puts on a show. I had a lot of fun Saturday, man. As much as anticipation as it is, seeing you when, when I see your walkout song and I play it, the anticipation is just like, it's man, it's anxiety. But seeing you fight Saturday, I was in my head. I was like, "Why is he? Why is he throwing elbows? What happened? You you're against the cage. This is this is where we see you throw these big elbows. This is what happened last fight. What I seen 
between this fight and last fight was very similar in the fact that you get him to the cage. He gets you away from the cage. You get him back on the cage. We didn't see no elbows. Was this a part of the game plan? Yeah, the elbows is always, you know, the part of the game plan, especially when we get inside or on the clinch or up against the cage. And uh, that's what I mean by, like, brain fog. Like, mm-hmm. my brain was saying do it, but my body just wasn't responding. On top of Jared being very good at staying really close to me and just that experience, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also think I gave him a little bit too much respect, like uh, being that he's a UFC veteran. You know, I just I haven't had this same, I haven't had this feeling of how I did on Saturday as a pro, like as an amateur. Years ago, I, I've felt similar, but I haven't had it till now. You know, so it was a uncomfortable feeling to be back in that, uh, not being able to overcome and. Uh, Mid, you know, like during the fight and make the adjustments. I kept putting my head right there in his arm. For some reason, I normally don't do that. I normally put my forehead. In, I try to put my forehead in on their chin and make it uncomfortable. But I kept shooting it right there in his armpit. And like the fifth time, I think it was he. He got me. You know. Well, he got you a couple times and you got yeah, out. Yeah. There was a couple times where it was under. You had a beard, so it's hard to tell where the chin was. But yeah. there was a point where I'm like, I think it's under the chin, and I got scared. But then you got out. What, how many times did he? Were, when you're on your feet, he got you in. Uh, what's this move called? The uh, guillotine. Guillotine. He got yeah. you in the guillotine. At that point, are you okay? Are you like, oh shit? Like, yeah, what's going yeah. On? I was good the, all the time standing, and mm-hmm. like you said, w- one of the times he had it in pretty good, but I was able to rip my head out. And I heard his coach telling him, it's in tight, it's in tight. And I felt him like, I was like kind of smiling to myself, like, yeah, go ahead and burn your arms out. And uh, I was able to get out. But then the last one, he pulled me down to the ground and then wrapped his legs around me. And I was thinking, oh, same same shit, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get out again. Mm-hmm. And then he it just like kind of cranked my neck. And I always thought that I would just go out like, Pass, you know, let him choke me out, but I don't know. I just panicked and tapped out, you know. Well, I think that's a part of the game, right? Like this is, this is the beauty of fighting, is now we get to see Kent come back, yeah. right? And as soon as the fight was over, I texted my wife. I said he wants to go another round. I told my wife exactly. I was like, he he wants to go again. This he he felt this, run it back. Yeah, like tonight, let's go. Yeah, for sure. Because <laughs> I know, I know this. You look great, man. I felt like you look good. I'm, I'm a spectator. I don't, I'm not a fighter, but as a spectator, I'm like, no, I can't. Like, he, if you threw those elbows, bro, if you had the chance to throw those elbows, I feel like he would have felt something different. Because he said it in the press conference. He was like, or in the after interview, he was like, yeah, man, I'm not gonna stand with that guy. That guy hits hard. <laughs> he knew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wish I could have got the elbows off because I, I know I could beat them. It was just, it was an off night. Like, uh, not everyone's a fighter, but you can relate. Like, if you played a sport or even went and shot around, shot hoops at at the park with your boys. Like, some days you're on, some days you're just, you miss everything, you know. And I didn't feel like I was completely off. Like you are saying, I, sometimes you feel stuck in the mud. I didn't, I wasn't that far gone where I was just that sluggish, but... Just my mind and my body weren't in tune. Like I, I, I remember saying elbow, like up elbow. It's like the controller broken. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't working. <laughs> it just yeah, you glitched out a little bit. Yeah, and then like I was paying more attention to what was going on outside of the cage than inside. You know, I remember looking at uh, Dave, the ref. We're like I never noticed the ref yeah. unless he's like trying to stop, pull me off, but. For, I was just staring at him I was up against the cage And I just like Looked at him And we locked eyes For a minute It was just weird You know Like That's Why weird. am I looking at yeah. Why am I looking at the ref <laughs> Ref's like Bro you're in a fight <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Yeah it was It was a mental thing You know I felt like um, This Saturday Was a special moment It Obviously we The things didn't go The way that we wanted But I feel like This was supposed to happen For some reason how do you feel? Obviously, physically, you're still recouping, but are you how how long until you get back into the cage and start training? Um, my coach, excuse me, my coach wants me to take a couple weeks off and then uh, start back at it. But uh, 
I'm thinking April. I want to get on. I want to fight at the UVU April 20th. And uh, so hopefully, hopefully Zach can find someone for me. I was going to ask, how does that work? Do you automatically, I mean, you were the champ. I mean, you've been Utah's guy. You're still Utah's guy. Do we get an immediate rematch? Is that something that you're just going to get the next opponent that's ready? Yeah, I'd love to get a rematch with Vendara, but uh, I asked him in the back. I was like, hey, let's run it back. And he, he didn't seem, uh, he, he didn't give me a, he, he said he was going to go down to 205. Mm. Oh, yeah, he did say that. So, uh, but I don't know. I'm not, obviously, I want the belt. I want to be a champ, but I just want to get that, you know, I want to get back in there and prove to myself, like, to overcome that mental blockage. Yeah. So I don't. I don't care if it's for a belt or not, but uh, that's obviously the goal is to to get that belt back and to get to the next uh, next stage. You know, I'm telling you, man, like you you are a, a phenomenal fighter, man. I see it, and you're a star. And I've told you that countless times that you're a star. You're our guy. And I, uh, as much as a L, you know, in the fighting world, I know this means a lot. This fight meant a lot to you. Just know that you got support, man. You got people that love you. And um, hopefully your supporters continue to support you No matter where this thing goes Because this is a journey man The journey of a fighter is dark And it's bright Yeah, You know what I mean And so hopefully there's people that shoot you messages And, and what not uh, To hopefully show you that you got support Do you feel that? Oh yeah I was a, It, it was a overwhelming You know I feel like just as many people message me when I win as as when I lost. I had a lot of support, and uh, it's always new people too that I don't even really know. But they'll send me something. And it's like uh, you know, it lifts my spirits, and it's it's nice that uh, I have people reach out and and support me and tell me that you know you're still the champ in my eyes, and you did great, and we know you'll be back and. You're our guy, man. The city's on your back, bro. You're carrying a whole state. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of pressure, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I'm the one to do it. You are. You're that guy, even when you're not fighting and you're just walking around the arena saying what up to people. Your presence is felt. You know what I mean? That says a lot because there's a lot of guys that go in that cage who don't have that same impact. Win, lose, or draw. They don't have the impact that you have on this state. And specifically on that organization of Fierce Fighting Championship. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it means it means a lot. And, um, you know, during this time of just recouping and figuring things out, just know that you got support, man. Right on, man. I appreciate you. But I'm not going to lie. As soon as you lost, I was like, oh, that dude that you knocked out in front of that bar was like... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> I knew he was gonna lose. <laughs> Man, when I see that video, I was like, oh, ouch. <laughs> yeah, TikTok took it down. I was like, ah, oh, it's probably for the best. Oh, they give you a warning? Oh, yeah. I got a warning for smoking, too. I'm like, what the heck? I see people die on TikTok all the time. What's your algorithm look like? <laughs> like you know, like car accidents. Yeah. And like, it's just looking at people die. Yeah, I'm. I, mean, I check all the ones that you have to like click. You know, see video. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one that's blurred. Yeah, <laughs> yeah your Twitter title is crazy. Yeah. My my girl be looking at it and she's like, "Man, why do I look at your phone?" <laughs> she's like, I didn't need to see that. How are things going on with uh, your girl? Have you proposed okay, yet? Man. Yeah, yeah. She's my fiance now. And, uh, oh so, snap! Yeah, she said yes. And, uh, like I was saying, we was I was working on the baby. She's pregnant now. What? Yeah. Oh, let's go! Yeah. Oh, you. Oh, so I was joking earlier. I said he's gonna become podcast poppy. Now he's really a poppy. Yeah. <laughs> man, do we? Uh, how far along? She's due in June. Okay, so you just found out. Uh no, it's, she's five months pregnant. Oh okay, yeah. So you know what the sex is? Yeah, it's Do you a wanna, girl. Oh, yeah. Okay, girl. First one and a girl. Do we have a name? No, no names yet. But uh, if anybody out there, I, I need help with. <laughs> What's your girl? She's a white girl. What's what? Is no, she? she's she's half Samoan. Half oh, she's white. half some. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and you're are you half Tongan? Yeah, half Tongan, half white. So half. So the baby's gonna be white Samoan and Tongan. Yeah. What's a good 
I mean, do we go to clash cliche Moana? <laughs> 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 um, is there a family name like that you're thinking about? Any any uh, anything that you're thinking about? I'm not. I want to keep the Polynesian, you know, base, but uh, I'm open to what to anything. I just my brain's not. I can't think. I, you know, she's always like, "You think of anything?" I'm like, nah. You know what? As a father, and as a father of a baby girl, it's just always going to be baby. It's going to be sweetie pie, cutie pie, yeah, baby girl. It's going to be whatever your pet name is for your daughter. You will never call her by her first name, and if you do, it'll be something you know short. Yeah. What about Mele? Are we going to do a Mele? I like that. That's that's my grandma's name. So it's a beautiful name. And all the low key, all the melees that I've ever ran into, loyal and trustworthy. They have my back. Man, if yeah, I think Mele is a good name. If you have suggestions, hit them up. Yep. <laughs> how how did you feel? How did you find out that your girl Well, let's backtrack a little bit. How did you propose? Uh we were in uh, Cedar Breaks uh in Bryce Canyon and I, we just had a dinner, a big family dinner. It was hella cold, but uh, we went on a little walk, and it was like in, up, you know, it's like Bryce Canyon, so it's real wilderness. We just went on a little walk, and then I was like, well, it's like hella cold, so I'm going to get down. <laughs> like, we ain't going to walk too much farther. <laughs> 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 I'm going to get down right here. Were was, you nervous? Yeah, I was nervous. I was cold. I was shaking. <laughs> like, <laughs> but, yeah, it was... It was special, man. I didn't. I didn't want to do like the recorded or like you know. I just yeah. wanted it to be intimate, me and her, and we both cried a little bit, and then we just came back in and told the fam like, "Hey, you got something to share with you guys?" And it, it was special, man. It was dope. That's awesome, man. I uh, I was super nervous. You know, the thing is, is that you've been with your girl for a while, so. I mean, you can kind of feel like she's going to say yes, right? Like, she ain't going to say no. Yeah. She got no choice. <laughs> <laughs> I was the same thing with my girl. I've been with my girl for, I was with, uh, with my girl for eight years before I uh, proposed. So I knew, and we had kids, so I knew, like, you know, she's going to say yes. But for some damn reason, we still get nervous. Still get nervous. Get cold. Get the, the sweats. Because it's a weird thing. Man, I don't know why and at what point in history we made it marriage such a big thing, but it's a commitment, right? It says that, yo, regardless of what happens, I'm going to have your back. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to protect you. And in return, I need you to be loyal. I need you to be faithful. I need you to hold it down. It's a bond. Now you have that. So at what point did you find out you were pregnant? How did she tell you? Uh, oh, like I said, we we were trying. I was I've been wanting uh, a baby, so uh, oh, I was on top of it. She had the flow app, and then uh, so like, oh, you like you're ovulating? Yeah, Let's go. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, I knew when she was supposed to have her period, you know. And then I was like, oh, you're late. And she's like, what? Only by a day. And I was like, yeah, but. And then it was like two days, and then we got to test it like. Eight a week or something And mm -hmm. it was positive I was like yeah I knew I knew you are pregnant Wow That's dope man Congratulations man Thank You're about you, to man. be a father You're bringing a little life Into this world Little Mele Maybe Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Little baby's gonna be here Does that change Your trajectory On this fight thing How do you feel about Continuing to fight yeah, it's, uh, don't change it. It just intensifies my my passion and my my why of why I need to get to this. You know, it's my dream and it's it's my passion. But if uh, if I can use it to to feed my family, you know, like why not? So kill two birds with one stone type of thing. But uh, it's just motivation, and I want to be great for her, and I want her to. To look up to me and just be proud of her, her dad, and you know, I, I want to give her a good life and and everything. I I didn't, you know, how yeah. it is. Everything you didn't have, you want to give your kids. Absolutely, you 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 use your life story to hopefully build a better life, and it's cool, man. I'm gonna get you uh some plates and some paper plates and paper forks because uh <laughs> when you when that baby comes up, you ain't gonna want to do no dishes. Yeah. <laughs> For real. June. My birthday's in June. She might be a cancer. 
Cancers are are great human beings. Salute. Yeah. How's your wife feeling? Or your fiance? She's she's great. She's like her family's always like, How you feeling, Lauren? She's like, Great. I'm like, dang man, if it's that easy, just keep it keep them coming. My first one was really that easy. My wife my well, I shouldn't say that. Part of her pregnancy was really good. And then she uh, she had to end up getting the Lovenox shot, which is a blood thinner. So for about five months out of her pregnancy, I had to shoot her in her stomach with blood thinning shots for twice a day for all of her pregnancies, all three of her pregnancies. So pregnancies, I mean, she's building a human right now. Yeah. She's baking a person. Think about that. That's wild. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and then once you, um, once you start feeling the kicks and stuff, things get real. Oh man, it's it's a beautiful process. Are you doing any classes or anything like that? No, I ne- I need to. I mean, you'll be fine. Being a daddy's up. We're just on the job job training right now. Like you're yeah. learning on the job. Yeah, I feel like I'm ready though. I'm at a good age in life, and you know, I'm not yeah. young. I'm not a young kid. Like I feel like it's the perfect time. Yeah, man. Um, how's your family feeling about it? They're excited. Yeah, my mom's already been. Shopping and buying She's like I'm, I went to Carter's I'm sorry <laughs> I was like Don't be sorry yeah. Take care of that baby man Yeah You're gonna be a good father man You could tell The the fact that you knew She was pregnant Before wifey did Like that says a lot You're, you're a hungry father I feel bad for your daughter Cause she's gonna have a dad That is protective <laughs> Yeah I can already tell It's um I already see my daughter She's three years old And I'm already like Baby girl Like Why are you jumping off the couch Like chill (laughs) (laughs) Knock your melon (laughs) Relax (laughs) Would you ever let your daughter Jump into the cage No Mm. No. I mean I'm not It's it's not about Once she's an adult You know I feel like that's On on her That she gotta make her choices But I'm trying to that's why I'm fighting in the cage, so she wouldn't have to fight in the cage, you know. But she can get a lot of inspiration. As but much as I'm going to train her for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. As much as you are, you're fighting for your dream, right? You're in there. You're 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 learning technique. You're learning this different thing, martial arts. As much as you're in there doing that, you're inspiring a lot of people to do that same thing, right? And your daughter might be one of them. She might go back and see daddy's fights and be like, whoa. My dad's a badass I want to do that Yeah I, I couldn't stop her at that But I'll make her mom stop her <laughs> <laughs> You know mom's feisty Moms are always feisty Yeah I'm gonna be the nice dad and a, um, Mean mom <laughs> Yeah That's how it is in my household yeah. Mom's the hard ass yeah. Always That Me the kids come to me I'm like my oldest son He's 10 years old He asks his mom Hey mom can I play on the phone no It's like see You should have asked me I would have said yes <laughs> Dads are fun Yeah Moms are the hard asses Yeah <laughs> So June baby Your brother just fought His first fight No first in a while But he's two and one now Oh he's two and one yeah. Because he got injured Yeah And he was supposed to Well hold on Was this amateur or pro Amateur Amateur yeah. Just got a, a big win Yeah First round finish How does that make you feel As a brother Seeing your brother in there Proud man I'm so proud of him. He's been grinding and working and just having shitty luck, you know, just injury after injury. We were supposed to fight in Idaho last year. When I fought in Idaho, mm-hmm. he was supposed to fight in Idaho. And then, yeah, he's just been having uh, bad luck with the injuries. But, uh, man, he went out there and did his thing and got a finish and just proud of him. Does he have a fight coming up? Does, any work? I think, he, I think he's in a fight in May. I'm the – Goal is to get on the same card, so that'd be dope. Two for one for the fans. Yeah, but I get more nervous for when he fights and than my fights. When I was in Idaho, I went to the back to the locker rooms. And I started getting so anxious and sweaty. I was like, "Nah, I gotta go." <laughs> I gotta, yeah, I gotta. Are you in his corner? Uh, I was. I was that fight. Yeah, that's cool, man. It's a cool story. Two brothers. Yeah, and then our older brother Alan, he he might fight this year too. He's like, he's like, I got, I think I got one more in me. And that's the whole reason why you got into it, right? Yeah. So ideally, if we could all three get on the same card, that'd be epic. That'd be like a 
a, a big thing for us, you know, as, bro- yeah. as brothers, all three get on the same card. That would be nuts. So what made him? Is he just inspired by you guys? Yeah, I just think he's a little anti and just all the nerves of watching both his brothers, younger brothers fight. It's like he he just wants to get back in there one more time. Dang, you guys are like the new big baller brand. (laughs) 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 The Mafaleo brand. (laughs) That's dope, man. I hope he uh, hopefully he gets to get that last fight, man. On the same card will be dope. Your older brothers kick it off, then your younger brother, and then you come back. Yeah, that'd be sick. That'd be ill. Now we need a we need a, a woman mafale winner. Do we have a cousin, a niece, yeah. somebody? <laughs> my sister, she gets, she's both my sisters get down, but my my sister used to want to fight, and then I think she just was like, nah, I'll just stick to training. That's something that um. We were talking about earlier about you being able to see um, Talon fight, which, by the way, Talon, man, that dude is nice. He's Salute an athlete, to him, bro. He's an athlete. Very nice, man. Dom, you need to relax in the background, though. <laughs> Stop it, Nico, go wild. <laughs> I love my brother. Um, an amazing talent. You said that you watched him. You you seen Zeke's fight. That's been a, a question from spectators like me. Does does the main event, the top card, do you guys watch the fights leading up? Do you guys pay attention to what's going on? Uh, normally, I try not to because, like I said, it's, it zapped my energy, I feel like. But uh, these ones were important. You know, I, Talon, I had a lot of anxiety on, on his fight because I knew it was going to be a, a war and I knew he was going to he was gonna be tough. And then I thought Zeke was going to win and... Uh, Man, shout out Zeke. He he's yep. he grinds with me. Yeah. He's, he's in there with me and uh it just sucks to see all the hard work and then not get the outcome, you know, and it's not it's like man, all his losses I feel like are wins. Like he should you know That Chisholm fight? He's so close. This then, fight? Yeah, man. I'm like It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Not to take anything from Chisholm, not to take anything from this uh r- round stone. Yeah, no, no. Um but I mean, Zeke's our guy. That's a, that's our guy. It's Utah's guy. That's our guy. And I, I'm rooting for him. I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for all of our Utah guys. And Zeke is just that dude, man. He just... Maybe it starts with the theme song. Maybe it starts with the walkout song, man. When he walks out to Salem, I'm just like, man, this dude just... It, you just feel the good vibes. You feel the good energy. And then he goes out there... And he puts on a good performance, and then for whatever reason, just a split second thing happens, and that's part of the fight game. And it happens, and it hurts. It hurts. It's a heartbreaking loss. Um, does you as a teammate, somebody as a brother, as a supporter of these guys, what do you say to somebody like Zeke in that moment? I'm just telling him, you know, to keep his head up and that – uh it's like you said. It's heartbreaking. It's so hard because it's not. It's not like he's getting outclassed or these guys are better than him. It's just minor, minor little adjustments, and just like my fight too. You know, I feel like if I didn't just keep putting my head right there, I'd have been fine. You can't give your neck to a black belt so many different times and not, ex- you know, mm-hmm. not expect to get choked out. But uh, I just told him we got to just keep working. Minor adjustments. And it, both of our losses were a mental loss, you know. Mm-hmm. Like it's not like we weren't ready physically. We we trained our asses off strength and conditioning, you know, multiple gyms, Rise, Classic, Agima, like Team Link. We're traveling and back, you know, sparring with the best guys in the state. Just, you know, really working. And so it's not a lack of work. People sometimes think, oh, maybe he's unconditioned. He's not conditioned, but it's like, no. It's not that. It's just so many factors going into a fight, and uh, it's hard to be perfect for 15 minutes or 25 minutes or whatever it needs. It's such a small percentage of your, your day, but to take 10 weeks of hard work and practice and everything and just to get it into that small, you know what I mean, yeah. small little time, it's a special thing, and all the all the stars got to be aligned for you to, to do to be perfect, you know, and 
just wasn't our night. And I know we'll both be back. We're both hungry to get that win back, and especially Zeke. He's had all those those wins slip right through his fingers. It's not like he's getting dominated by any means, you know. I think if anybody talks down on Zeke on his performance, they don't know. They don't know yeah. because that dude is a grinder. He worked his ass off. And like you said, man, even though he caught those L's, to me, they still look like wins. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's on his record. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, that's that's how it happens. But I don't think it keeps him away from um, keep bringing in a crowd and people still cheering for him. Because you see it, man. This dude puts his heart and soul, just like you, just like all you guys. You guys put your heart and soul into that, into that cage. And... I think if anybody, if any of my listeners, if you don't understand mixed martial arts, if you don't understand what these guys do, I highly suggest you go check out a fight. Get in tune with the culture of mixed martial arts. Get in tune with the culture of of this, you know. Even if a guy takes you down, because I hear this often. Oh, well, if they were standing up, if they were throwing hands, Kent would have got him. But at the same time, it's like... Hey, if he took you down, you got to get down there and you got to work what you with the tools that you sharpen, right? Yeah, this is mixed martial arts. Mm-hmm. People get mad when they mix it up. <laughs> I was uh, I was surprised, not surprised. I honestly thought Chisholm would have been your next ma- match. Yeah, I'd be down to fight Chisholm. That was I was supposed to fight Chisholm, and then when I had that motorcycle accident, mm. so you guys haven't then, got down yet. No, and then last time. After he beat Zeke, because since Zeke's my brother, you know, I was like, well, shit, me and, me and you run it. And he he said something along the lines of, uh, those are some big elbows to be getting hit by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I respect for keeping it real, you know. Yeah. He, but he told Zach, he's like, yeah, that's a, that's a big guy with some that big elbows. Because <laughs> <laughs> you got what? You got, a, what, about four or five inches on Zeke? Yeah, Zeke's about five eleven. Yeah, five eleven, yeah. maybe six foot. Maybe yeah, six three, six four. Yeah, so I, I Chisholm, he he ain't dumb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that I mean, he has a chin though. Yeah. Zeke was hitting him hard. Oh my gosh, the bombs that he was throwing on on Chisholm. Yeah, and I think it was I was watching the podcast. I think it was hundred and twelve strikes to two, the differential in the first <laughs> round. So I was like, man, no, no heavyweight can redline for five minutes and not get tired. Mm-hmm. Like Zeke beat himself on, you know, that fight. Yeah, he just emptied the tank, and and people would say like the ref could have stopped it. And yeah, everyone, no one would have been mad if the ref stopped it. But, I thought he would, but I mean, he didn't. And and look, Ch- well, look what Chisholm was able to do. So it's like, yeah, it sucks. But uh, it's like you said, it's the fight game. It's a fight game, man. That's why I think that you have to you have to show appreciation for you guys. You guys are risking your life to bring entertainment, to to pursue your dreams, to hopefully live off of this and and you know just support your family. You got a baby coming, right? Like that's the goal. And I highly suggest next time you get the chance to see the man across from me fight, go buy a ticket. Having Utah support Utah is highly um, obviously recommended, but we need it. We need the Utah support, and it baffles me that we're not we're not filling up half of the Maverick Center yet, because Saturday's fights were fun. Yeah, there were some fun fights, and there were five titles on the line. And there was a man. Some of those ma- those were some good matchups. Oh yeah, and even like the- it's not like Fierce just trying to pad anyone. Like look, uh, you know. I took a loss. Zeke took a loss. A lot of hometown guys took a loss. They're they're putting real good matchups together, and uh, it's not you know it's, they're they're putting the highest level guys in front of us. That Haro fight was great. Yeah, man. Shout out Joe Haro, boy. He, almost a year to the day, he fought in Idaho. And, yep. Oh, I just got chills, bro. Yeah, man. That's that's epic, man. And. We know what's what's next. We know that the next level for you could be the UFC. We know that this match probably could have got you to the UFC. I feel like guys like Joel was on that same type of tip. And now it's it's cool to see because if you remember Joel from a year ago, this fighter that we seen on Saturday, oh, my gosh, it's night and day. He looked, oh, he put him that first round. Oh, my gosh. 
And the guy that he was fighting was not a chump at all. Oh no. no. He was nice. Yeah. So to see where he came from a year ago from uh where he was, I'm excited to see how much you improved from this last one as well. Um how has it been fighting in Rise Classic? It's it's been great, man. Going to a Gima. How how do you feel like you're you're sharpening your skills? Are you enjoying this process cuz at um two fights ago Two fights ago, you were at one gym. Now you're kind of spreading out, and you're going to different ones. How's that process been? Oh, it's been great. Uh, getting to mix it up with all the the heavyweights around, like uh, Eric Iman over at Team Link, and just Zeke. And uh, last camp we had Ben Moore coming in, Lauren Sua, the one that just uh, beat Fiji, mm. and just not even heavyweights like. There's just even Joel. Joel comes down to Aguima on Saturdays and spars. I see him there on Wednesday nights for uh, grappling. So I'm just surrounding myself with the the best top guys. And uh, that was that's what's so hard about the defeat is I didn't represent the level that I'm at. You know, I, I leveled up from my last fight, and uh, it just it sucks to not. I feel like. I I know it's not true, but I feel like I let my team down, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I know they don't feel like that, but in a way I, I did because I didn't. There's just so much growth and progress that we made, and uh, I didn't really get to showcase it in my, in my opinion, you know. Mm-hmm. Not just because I didn't get the win, but just how I lost. Like, you know, that's guillotine chokes. Like, that's the hardest choke to finish, one of them, you know. One of the easiest ones to defend. I didn't fight the hands. I didn't like, you know what I mean? I just, I didn't showcase our team and our skills like that I know I could. And that's why I want to run it back so bad. And even if it's not against Vendara, I just want to get back in the cage to show that, you know, I'm better than this. My, you know, the training and preparation that went into this is, was, was a lot and deserves to get recognition in a, in a positive way, you know? Yeah. I hear you, man. How does how does a fighter? Because you did all the technical stuff, right? You get into the match, and you you even said it, man. The the mental part is what you failed on going into this fight. How do you correct that going into this next one? Is there correct and mental? Uh, I feel like I learned a lot in in the back and the lead up, and uh, there was a just with uh, myself and things I can control, like I can. I need to be more uh, isolated before the fight instead of uh, having distraction, so to speak, and people coming in and out. I need to zone in, and uh, when it's time to lock in, I need to be more more isolated and uh, not be more selfish. Just not be a, like you know. I got friends that are fighting, but maybe not watch them next time. Mm. Just you know, they got to do their job. I got to do mine, but. If watching them is going to affect my job, then, you know, I'm going to have to watch, rewatch it, you know, or just send out, tell, you know, send yeah. my my good energy towards them, but not focus in on what they're doing because it's affected me this time, you know. One thing that I notice is, obviously, I'm the DJ. Um, I get your guys' walkout songs. And typically, you're more hype. It's more Tupac, something uh, more hype. This time you went you went Afro beat. What what was the the change on on the walkout song being more calm? Um, is there any I, thought I, to I that? I wanted to be calm. I was like, but I almost was too calm. You know, I didn't mm-hmm. really snap into that like urgency. And like I said, I was paying attention to shit. That's what I should have been getting off the cage and like you know. But I was just like kind of letting him dictate where it went. And not a big. I don't know. It's weird, man. It's hard to explain. I just like almost like didn't care. Mm. Lost the like the focus. And that's what I mean by mentally. You got to be laser like focused, like locked in and coming out. And you know what I mean? Like shaking hands with everybody. Like I'm not trying to be rude. I'm trying to make sure I get everybody's hand. But it's like I need to not worry about that and just worry about my job. Mm hmm. And shake hands after, you know, so to speak. Well, here's your warning. 
if Kent doesn't pay you no mind, if he ignores you, he's locked in. It's nothing personal. Next fight, yeah. he's locked in. We need we need him locked in. You're our guy, so we need you locked in for the next fight. Um, I was gonna ask you though, how did you feel about you mentioned Ben Moa, our, our brother Ben Moa? How did you feel about him getting the bare knuckle win? Oh man, I was so so proud of him. He didn't even get touched. He busted up his hands a little bit, but he, that other the dude he fought was tough, man. He took a lot of punches. Yeah, he took a lot of damage. Like that dude probably never fight again. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Trevor Bradshaw as well. Are you? Are Utah guys got the win? Yeah, I was proud of him. Man. I think there was one guy that didn't. Um, that yeah, my boy Mike. Mike Jones. Jones yeah. yeah, Mike Jones fought. Uh, he Jerome, won the belt. Yeah, he he, he beat Jerome Hatch for, is, for the middleweight. Jerome's still the light heavyweight champ, oh. but he moved down to fight Mike, and Mike beat him. Gotcha. Oh, that wasn't for the belt. Yeah. Oh, for the middleweight belt. Oh, so Mike Jones holds the middleweight belt. Yeah. When's he gonna defend it? It's gotta be um, soon. It's right? gotta be soon. Yeah. He looked nice against Jerome. Yeah, he looked real nice. Yeah, that's dope, man. Would you ever do bare knuckle? Yeah, I would for sure. I'm I'm focused on MMA right now, so I don't know. I don't think I would do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once I'm done with the MMA, it would be something I'd be do like a couple of fights or something. Especially if I can get to the level where I want in MMA, then it'd be really lucrative to do a couple of bare knuckle. Mm. If you're already an established, you know, well known fighter on a national level, then the the payday would be a lot bigger. Are you still representing yourself? Do you have management? Have you taken the Yeah, no no manager, yeah. I'm just not there. I'm not I'm not making the money yet to where I feel justified to be sharing it with you know, with yeah. the manager. If a manager has an opportunity for me to make more money then that's where I'm gonna sign with. But it, you know, it just don't make sense to me to sign a manager and share part of my money that I'm making on, on, on this scale, you know. Mm hmm I hear you. Any uh, opportunities outside of the promotion that you're currently fighting with? Uh, they said PFL was was int was looking at me, and they were they were keeping their eye on this fight. So mm -hmm. I don't know how they feel, but I'm on their radar, you know. Yeah, and I just it's almost it's kind of nice now that I don't have the belt. It's like the eye, you know, I'm not the name number one target anymore. Jared is. And, uh, I don't know how much I agree with that though, because yeah. you're still that guy. Yeah, the Mafaleo name still has a, a. People want that on their record. If they can get a win over you, they want that. So, as much as he holds the belt, I don't know the guy's name. I know your name. You know what I mean? And I know other people feel the same way. So, not to put more pressure on you, or <laughs> yeah. but. You your name does have your name holds as much as that title I feel like could. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm a spectator, but that's that's how I feel. Yeah, I'm just I'm excited to to fight, man. I just like you said, I'm ready. To get, uh, we can run it tomorrow. And uh, Roundstone, I, I want to fight Roundstone. He he beat Zeke. He was, you know, yeah. He was saying he wanted to fight me, but that was for the belt. I don't think he's interested in fighting unless it's for a belt. But mm. if he's listening, I'd love to knock you out, Roundstone. So we can we can make that happen in April if you want. He's an ex junkie though. Got stabbed seven times, shot twice. Oh really? I didn't hear that. <laughs> you didn't hear that? Uh -uh. Oh man, <laughs> he had a beautiful <laughs> interview at the end. He was like, you know, I was, I was, he almost lost his life to meth. He was left for dead, got stabbed. I don't know his part in it. <laughs> I'm not going to say you deserved it, Ralph Stone, but yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the story. Yeah. But he had a beautiful um, interview at the end where he was talking about defeating addiction. And really, I mean, coming out of there alive against Zeke is a lot, you know, surviving. Yeah. Not no. I wouldn't want to fight Zeke. Yeah, no. Nah. Just looking at that man, just shaking that man's hand. That's my guy. I'll give him a hug. I'll embrace him. He's coming on the podcast hopefully soon. He ignored my DMs. He said, Zeke, I see you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, how did I miss this message? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would not want to fight Zeke. If I see Zeke in a dark alley somewhere, if I see him at church, I'm walking the other way. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dangerous man. So, I mean... 
Not to say I don't know that I don't know Roundstone's record. I think uh, I think he's five and three now. Grudge match would be cool, but <clears throat> yeah, so, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, like I, get I just want to beat him up for, for <laughs> Zeke. You know, <laughs> he could add that. He could add that to his story. You know, I've been <laughs> stabbed, shot nine times, and uh, knocked out by can't. It puts a bed <laughs> by can't. <laughs> Damn! I'll all beat right, your ass worse than meth did, boy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people were um, hoping to hear you speak after the fight. Obviously, we didn't get to hear you speak. Um, was there anything that you wanted to tell the folks? Yeah, man. I just uh, so much support come that I received from the from our city and our just Utah period and. I just wanted to get on the mic and tell people how much I appreciate them and just people that reach out and like, hey, champ, let me send you like a couple hundred bucks for training. I know, you know, I know shit's got to be, you know, I know mm-hmm. it's expensive and man, it's just so hum- humbling to have the, I feel like I'm the people's champ, you know, like. You are, you're our guy. They just embrace me and support me and care about me and I. I wanted to win so bad for for you guys and for the fans and the kids that look up to me and to give my team the recognition and my training partners and and it didn't happen so it's like it's a gut shot but it's uh it's like I said a minor setback for the major comeback and yeah I feel bad for the next guy. I mean, why not? This is my sixth pro fight and here's the first time I felt like I wasn't in tune, you know. So it's like I'm not hanging my head about it. But uh, I know I could beat Vendara, and I didn't get to show that on Saturday. But whoever the next guy is, like I'm, I'm gonna run through him and the next guy, and we're just we get back on. You know, I'm, I'm feel confident. I'm gonna, I'm, you know, this loss didn't hurt me that much. You know, if anything, it's gonna help. It, it might have slowed me down for a month or two, but April I'll be back in the win, yeah. win calm. Yeah, I don't blame homeboy for saying he don't want to run it back. Yeah. <laughs> don't blame him. If you can get past it, <laughs> hey, keep on moving. But, uh, yeah, if I'm him, I'm not giving you another shot because <laughs> yeah. I don't want those problems. <laughs> yeah, I feel like he knows, too, that he – not. it's not – I don't feel like there's any luck involved, but he he won the only way he could, you know. I could have beat him ten different ways, and he he he's got that black belt – experience on me you know and uh he did what he had to do to win and hats off to him he's very experienced and uh very calm uh, and i learned a lot fighting him you know and just learned a lot about myself and just gonna keep it pushing short-term memory loss and mm. what a wife you feel uh she was she's proud of me you know but she she knows i could do better she she's trying to keep my spirits up cause I've just been Eeyore and around the house and you know like it's not poor me but it's just like damn man it's not it's not just didn't represent how I know I can and how I should and yeah I uh I, I I'm excited to see the next fight man because I, I know man you're gonna come back it's gonna be beautiful and you're gonna see the TM all over the fucking arena yeah. we're gonna be there we're gonna be there supporting and um I'm excited to see it, man. Me too, brother. Really excited. Are you sick of podcasts that just interview people with the same questions and gossiping nonsense? Are you tired of hearing about what's wrong with the world? Can you locate your nearest orphanage? Who cooked the last supper? R.I.P. Mr. Potato Head. Seppuku Harakiri. Where, Where is, is Mavis, Mavis Beacon? Beacon? This is Hoss. And this is Hoss Beefy. Listen to the Beans and Rice podcast. Exclusively in Braille and all streaming platforms. Patent pending. Having a good barber is essential, but having that good barbershop experience is even more essential. Get the barbershop experience you deserve with Boogie Down Barbershop, now located at 7378 South plaza center drive in west jordan suite number 106 gentlemen's cuts tapers fades and even a hot towel shave is on the menu so book your appointment today at boogiedownbarbershop.com and even follow us on social media at the boogie down barber
Hey, yo, you're probably listening to the Unrestricted Podcast with Dre Rocker. We are? No, they are. Yeah, oh, right, right, right. Oh, wow. And I'm the real Ruby. You can catch me and Fonzie and the... Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Funk. G Daddy Funk <laughs> on uh, Late Talk at the One Podcast. Yeah, but I, I think you have to come in more smoother, more funnier. Uh. Like, yeah, yeah, they could catch us on the Late Talk 801 podcast. Yeah, y'all can catch us on the Late Talk 801. Oh. Yeah, and be, be like, and yeah, man, hey, and they could catch people like me, the real Ruby, and people like you, Fonzie, and people like him, G Daddy Funk, wow, on that's the Late Talk 801. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Huh? I didn't hear him. I don't know, what? but this probably should be the ad. Is this, are these on? Catch a new episode every Monday on all streaming platforms. The Lake Talk 801. Tune in now. Tune in now. So as you know, I asked the internet. I said, hey, throw me some questions. And they do it. And we, we answer them. It could be specifically for me. It could be specifically for you. Now, questions is powered by the good folks over at Fusa Motors in Midville. In business for over 17 years, Fusa Motors got you covered. Whether if you need a sedan, a van, a truck, Luxury or just a motor to get you from A to B. Fusion Motors got you covered. 8160 South State Street in Midville. FusionMotors.com. That's F I U Z A Motors.com. First question comes from Samantha in West Valley City. Thoughts on the Super Bowl game, halftime show, and commercials? Did you watch the game? Yes, I did. You were going for the Niners, right? Yes. Yeah, my brother's, my brother's a big Niners fan. I wanted him to get it, but. What a game Yeah I, I really enjoyed that game man Defense Played the whole game It felt like Mahomes In that fourth quarter Was like nah Like I need to get this shit done myself Running for 20 yards What are you doing Untouched He's I mean there's a They're a dynasty for a reason right And if you look at the story Behind the Niners And Purdy Like Pretty incredible man Last pick of the draft you know what, third string quarterback for the Niners. I think he makes like a five hundred thousand a year, which to me is a lot, but to the NFL that's pennies. To go to the Super Bowl, I think the the Niners should not hold their head at all. And it just proves to that franchise like, yo, make some minor adjustments and go get it. That defense is something else though. Yeah, man. How, how, how'd you like the halftime? Oh, I loved it. Yeah, me too. I'm biased, so I'm a huge Usher. I love Usher. Yeah, I, I've, I love Usher since, you know, 7 o'clock. Uh, that. My yeah, Way. Yeah, <laughs> I think I was in like third grade or something. Yep, <laughs> the My Way album was great. Um, I do have to say what saved that that halftime show was the moment uh, Lil Jon came. As soon as Lil Jon came out, I was like, oh, it's lit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know how I, I, feel. I like Ludacris. I felt like that with Ludacris too. Mm-hmm. I don't know how uh, Swiss Beats feels about Usher caressing Alicia Keys. Yeah, I don't. maybe they know something we don't. Yeah, maybe he, maybe Usher's no threat. If you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Usher <laughs> might be playing for the other team. I don't know. Damn, he looks good though. For like, I'm like, man, this dude looks the same as. Mm-hmm. Young He looks good man Took off his shirt I was like Woof Look at him yeah. He's going after it like, Damn man <laughs> But he gets He has millions so Yeah but if I switch I'm like hey man Back, <laughs> back it up brother <laughs> yeah, yeah what do you do What do you do If your wife's a performer My boo was before Swiss Beats Yeah Right Alicia Keys and Usher Had a relationship before But that's his wife They have kids don't be caressing my wife like that, bro. Yeah, yeah. You can sing, but sing over there. Yeah, yeah. Don't be touching it. What are you doing? <laughs> Making a silhouette of her. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was dope, man. I think uh a lot of people were kind of like, yo, what's going on? Is he gonna be able to do more than what Rihanna did last year? Which I thought Rihanna being pregnant, I thought she killed it. I thought she yeah. did a great I really enjoyed it. I think he did a great job on the halftime show. Any commercials that stuck out to you? Uh, not off, off the bat. I mean, I love. That's why I watch it is for the commercials and halftime show. But the Verizon uh, Beyonce one was dope. Where she, where she was like, uh, "I'll beat any record, or I could be anything." And she kept on trying to beat the five uh, G network or whatever, and she couldn't beat it. 
Like she was like, I'm on the moon dancing. <laughs> I was like, damn. I think I missed that one. Uh, you would yeah. potty break that. that yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was a the Uber Eats one with the Jennifer Aniston. Yeah. Where they had to forget something. That was pretty creative. The Jason Momoa one was good. Yeah. Where they did the flash dance. Yeah. So I think overall, Super Bowl 2020, well, 2024, 2000, 2023, 2024 was great. Did you, what'd you guys do? Low well, we key? Just, yeah, I just at the house. What'd you eat? What was on the plate? Oh, we just had a big breakfast. We didn't really, we, yeah, we didn't have like food like normal. Oh, okay. Yeah. We hit a wing nuts. Shout out to wing nuts in Taylorsville, man. They got swamped. Oh my, I, I ordered a head. And uh, when I got there, my food still wasn't done. And there was probably about 30 people in the lobby. Yeah, it was lit. But the people were still in good spirits. The dude handing the food was in good spirits. Because you think, man, I don't know if you ever work fast food, but I worked at Pizza Hut. And, man, it get, Super Bowl, that's like, man, just overwhelming. Yeah, so I salute. can imagine. Salute to those folks, man. We ate good. Samantha, I appreciate your question. Okay, next question comes from uh, Togi in, San, in Sandy, Utah. If you could go forward or backwards in time, where would you go? Uh, oh, uh, that's simple. I just I'd go back, uh, back to spend another day with my dad. Mm. Pops was a big, big uh, person to you, huh? Yeah, my hero. Yeah. What do you think about? Um, I don't know your faith, but to me, I feel like Pops knows where you are in life. Pops feels that like he's gonna be a grandfather. You know what? How do you feel, Pops would take to having your little baby girl? Oh, he's my dad was telling me for years, like, man, I want to see your kids before before I die, you know. And unfortunately, I didn't have any before he did. But uh, I feel like he sent he sent us our daughter, you know. Like, I feel like he's yeah, yeah, he's there. I, I think so, man. Um, me. I would love I would love to live in the era and really feel the revolution of Bob Marley. I would have loved to see him perform live with the Whalers. Maybe during that time, even with the Stones, seeing the Stones perform live. Like I'm thinking go back to a time when music, that live music was revolutionary. You know what I mean? The new Bob Marley movie just came out, One Love. I haven't seen it yet. But I, I would love even Tupac like going, you know, yeah. the the was it the House of Blues and seeing that last performance, you know, famous performance where he performed, hit him up. Like I would have loved to see that. Yeah, that'd be epic seeing that live. Yeah. All right, good question, Togi. I appreciate it. Uh, Nate in Las Vegas. I know you didn't go nowhere Saturday cause, or Sunday because uh, traffic was probably crazy. All right, this is a F Mary kill. Are you familiar with the how that works? I think so. Yeah. All right, so F marry kill. You have to F somebody, marry somebody, or kill somebody. And if your girl gets <laughs> mad, <laughs> he gets a pass today. This is <laughs> hypothetical. <laughs> <laughs> Selma Hayek, Rihanna, Megan Fox. F marry kill. Uh, You're familiar with all three. Yeah, right? I'm gonna have to. <laughs> I'm about to kill Megan. Uh, F Rihanna and Mary Selma. That's a good. That's that's exactly what I would have did. I feel like Selma Hayek will hold it down. No, she keep a nice little house. You know what I mean? <laughs> she can cook probably. Yeah. yeah. Watch us just get it wrong. <laughs> Watch she just be the devil. <laughs> uh, good question. I appreciate that. All right, Will Wonder with the Will Wonder podcast. Salute to my brother. Uh, when it's all said and done. What's one thing you want to be remembered by? Uh, being a good person and uh, having a good heart and just treating treating people how I want to be treated, you know. I just want to be remembered for the, the man I was and not for, the, for anything, you know, not for the accolades or the any of that, just on how I treated people and the... the Impact I left on on people's lives. That's that's what I want to be remembered for. Mm. 
I love it. I think that's a that's a good answer, man. I have one last question that that snuck by, came in last minute from the Butter Rican Puerto Rican, my man host from the Beans and Rice podcast. Describe in detail what you would want to do. Or hold on, describe in detail what you would do if you had a full week off. That means no training, no nothing, just a full week off. What would you do? Uh, probably, what does that look like? Probably travel somewhere. So if if money wasn't an issue, I'd you know I'd go to New Zealand or somewhere dope like that and just, just be by the water, the ocean. Just probably snorkel and uh, sip pina coladas and you know chill in the sand, watch the sun come up, watch the sun go down. Yeah. Simple. I like that. I recently um, a podcast that I follow they. Had somebody come on there and talked about his trip to New Zealand, and he was telling me that the a river is turquoise in New Zealand. So I had to look it up. Motherfucker is really turquoise. It's beautiful, bunch of green. Um, he also said that it's very hard to get citizenship in New Zealand. Like you have to be born in New Zealand and have like New Zealand blood in you. Yeah, to be a resident. So I was like, man, I would love to live there, but I can't. <laughs> It's a good place to visit, though. I've been, I've been there. Oh, you have? Yeah. It's beautiful, man. It's yeah. Reminded me kind of California vibe, like a northern California, but uh, much, much cleaner. Mm. Where haven't you traveled that you want to? Uh, Europe. I want to check out Europe. And uh, it's always been a dream to go to, like, Japan, Thailand. Yeah, I, I want to see the world. So, yeah. I want to see Ireland. Yeah, that'd be dope. I want to see Ireland. I think it looks looks dope from the pictures. Yeah. All right. Um, last question comes from me. This has been a reoccurring question that was asked to me, and I thought it was just so good that I want to ask my guests. Can you love unconditionally? Uh, just anybody or just in general? Like, just the capacity to... You tell me. Is there certain people that you can put a condition on your love for? Versus others And the reason why I ask is because In the discussion of this It's been brought up like as a parent You know Our kids do grow up They're their own person They make decisions Can you love your child through bad decisions You know That impact impact others Can you love unconditionally I feel like yeah I feel like yes I nope. feel like my mom and my grandma love me unconditionally. All the all the poor choices and you know, things I've done they you know, could see, still see the good in me and you know, even if I was like a, a murderer or something, I know my mom would still love me. And, that's a that's a great testament. That's a great example. You're living it. You've lived it, man. Like, no matter what I did, they 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 stuck by me. That's unconditional love right there. Dahmer's dad stuck next to him, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? To the very end. That's crazy. Because I think about it, too. I'm like, damn, if my son was eating people... <laughs> I don't know, dog. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, Mr. Kent Mafaleo, man. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to tell the people? Anything that we missed that you want to talk about? Uh, no, just want to shout out to to my gyms and uh, my sponsors: Twenty Two Salute, Glow Pop, Mill Creek Nutrition, All Sports Mouth Guards. Um, Life cracks, man. He's just keeping me, keeping me mobile and limber. That's the crab practice. Yeah, yeah, man. You got to check him out, bro. He's, he's game changer. And all my training partners. Special shout out Tyler Call from Agima. He he fought for a belt on Saturday too, and it didn't go his way. But uh, he's one of my best training partners, and uh, I know he'll be back. I just want to tell him. I appreciate him and and all his time in helping me get better, and uh, I know it's not the it's not the end for either of of us, and we'll be back. Mm. Are you, is Water and Wellness still a sponsor? Oh yeah, of course. I'm always repping Water Wellness. I always forget too. Like I have so many people that support me. TMS Trees in uh, Cedar City, I believe. 
Yeah, there. I love those guys. But yeah, and just all my fans, man. Everyone that supports me and and purchases tickets or pay per view or even just sending out positivity my way and the belief you you believe in me is uh, it's huge. And I just can't tell you how how blessed and appreciative I am for for you guys. And without that, uh, I wouldn't be in the position I'm I am. Yeah, keep it coming. There's no reason to stop. Um, as long as you're fighting, we need to be in your corner. Um, the high, the highs, the lows. Same thing with all of our Utah guys. You know what I mean? Like, if 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 there, if there's a fighter that you really love and you really want to support, keep supporting them no matter what. You know, keep them going um, because it goes a long way. Kind words. How do you feel about? And last question before we wrap up. Uh, how do you feel about Utah female MMA? I feel like it's growing, and uh, yeah, uh, Ali had her first fight. She didn't get the win, but she was very, very showed showed good. You know, a lot of great things, and I don't feel like she was hurt at all. She went the distance, showed a lot of good clinch, and it's minor things get back. But uh, yeah, I feel like MMA is getting really big in Utah, and uh, female MMA is. Not as big. It's like I was comparing it to the heavyweight division. Like, you know, it's slim, like the heavyweight division. So females that are interested in training MMA, I feel like uh, if you're passionate about it and you're dedicated, uh, there's a strong possibility you can get to the highest level if if you're, a, a, you know, committed, committed to it. Yeah, we need it, man. We need it. Show up, ladies. Show up. Um, is there any... I'll save that question for the next time. <laughs> Kent Mafaleo, what's the socials? Where can we follow you? Where can we follow this journey? Uh, Kent Mafaleo on Facebook and uh, King V801 on Instagram. Did you hear the V chants? Oh, yeah, every time. I did feel like the crowd was a little tired. Norm, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but it was, it was late, a long man. night, man. It was a long night. And uh, these the amateurs, man, the, the, wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all were going a little too long. Yeah, I'm like, man, it, usually <laughs> it's like boom, 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 fight seven, like start wrapping your hands. I'm like, oh, dang, that was quick. Yeah. Man. I'm like, wow, man, looking at the clock. And, but yeah, next, I was going to tell Zach uh, when he was telling me, he's like, I need your walkout song, man. I was going to be like, just tell Dre to pick it, man. Like, mm. I'm, uh, so next one, I'm, I'm just going to let you rock. Oh, whatever. don't put that pressure on whatever, me, bro. I, mean, I don't care what it is. Like, <laughs> you know what's funny? I keep, I don't know if you noticed it, but I keep your, uh, anytime, mm, I'm not going to reveal that just yet. I'll, I'll tell you off fire because uh, they might be like, oh, he's biased. The DJ's biased. Yeah. <laughs> I am, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I appreciate you, Kent, man This open door policy, man Whenever you want to come through, man This is yours Appreciate you, man Yeah, I uh, got your, your your friend He's going to come on We're going to talk to him So stay tuned because um, I'm hearing hearing a, a good stories coming from, from your buddy Yeah, for sure, man Martin, Marty's going to come on And um, I'm sure you guys are going to have a great talk, man I'm excited to, Hell to yeah. check it out Hell yeah. Um, make sure you follow uh, at Dre Rocka, D R E R A W K A. And if you want to support this podcast, um, it is not cheap to have a studio. It's not cheap to have equipment. So if you want to help support, buy a t shirt, buy a hoodie, buy a sweatshirt, allrock.com, A L L R A W K.com. If you can't and you want to um, support other ways, just share. Share this content. If you're a fan of uh, Kent and you want to support him Share this podcast Tell the people about him He's getting his story out uh, We have two other episodes That dropped uh, previously Go watch those um, Find out where he got his journey uh, Where this whole MMA journey started from And uh, learn more about him as well I hope y'all have the day you deserve Protect your light We out Peace Peace